Welcome to Hope Academy. Uh, my name is Mr. O, and today I am going to be going over a concept in statistics um, through through this video format called Fast Rev. Fast Rev is a fast review over the concepts that you need to know in order to get ready for the AP statistics exam. So the AP exam or advanced placement is part of the College Board requirements um, in order for you to get sort of a score that could provide. Um, credits to you towards college. But either ways, the important thing today is that I'm going to be going over the fundamentals of confidence intervals, how to use the necessary tools that are provided to you or you are able to use and to be able to solve out anything um, generally based on uh, idea of review. So I mean, as in, if you forgot confidence intervals, I'm going to be going over the general premise of them so that you can make sure you are ready for the exam. Um, so in front of you is a printout of the 2009 AP Statistics Free Response Questions, which is provided to you on the exam. Um, and so in front of you is this packet, but the first page is not very important towards this concept. It's just for you to be aware that this is readily available to you. So I'm going to continue to flip on. The second page is also not very important, but duly note that there are useful things such as binomial distribution, concepts that I plan to cover in the future through these videos. Um, there is also a page right here, which is going to be very useful to you. And this is where I'm going to pause for a moment. So the concept today I'm talking about is confidence intervals. And they actually mention right here, confidence intervals equals to statistics plus or minus the critical value times the standard deviation of statistic. And I'm going to go more in depth about what does that mean. But before I do so, you have to also note that what is also provided to you on this sheet is the sample mean, the sample proportion, which is all the mean sort of statistic-based questions, but there's also standard deviation-based values that are provided for the difference of sample means and the difference of sample proportions, which is all standard deviation-based equations. And if you notice right here, they do provide a very thorough breakdown of these, but I'll also help you to remember these equations um, in the best way possible so that when you're taking the exam, you don't have to 100% rely on this, um, but it will be very useful for you in case. But before I continue doing so, um, it is mentioned that there is a critical value in this, and the sheet continues on to provide you those type of critical values for the Z or T test. So right here is the Z chart, and you can note that it's a Z chart by no noting right here. It says Z right here, and this will be helpful for you and um, if you know how to use this chart, which I will also explain in the future. And there's more a Z chart right here, and there is a T chart right here, which is another form of test that you will have to understand, the distinction between Z and T's, T tests, and that will also be explained in future videos. Um, but today's my main goal is to just explain specifically just the fundamental skills or tools you could use to help you solve or be ready for the AP stats for now. Um, and this is a chi-square chart right here. <clears throat> so today, I'm going to be specifically focusing towards the equation formats and along with the calculator use and such. And so on the sheet right here, I'm going to be covering that. So. Um, when we talk about confidence intervals, and I'm going to write down the name confidence intervals right here. Confidence intervals. You have to understand that confidence intervals, um, the, the book mainly mentions, the t I mean, not the book, the worksheet or AK, the equation bank that's provided to you on the AP exam. It states statistics plus or minus the critical value times the standard deviation. Um, for me, at least what I usually mention to my students is that I state it's usually the mean, which is the statistic, plus or minus your critical value, times your standard deviation. And so what I mean by the, the mean plus or minus critical value times whatever not is this. So let's say we are talking about a sample, a one sample sort of test, one sample. And this is part of the confidence intervals, one sample confidence interval. The mean value for one sample will always be the, the symbol like this. Is the mu sign or is it just the mean? Um, a lot of times for critical, value, critical values, they're either Z or T, Z star, as we'll call it, or critical value of Z, or the critical value of T or T star, as we'll call it. 
Um, for this example, I'm just going to use Z star. There's no reason specifically why. Just make sure you understand the conditions, which I will also explain in the future. But there is a distinct difference between these two. And so it will be the Z star plus or minus the standard deviation. For this case, it's going to be standard deviation is going to be the standard deviation of the population divided by square root n. And so a lot of these components are provided, and so you need to be understanding that you could be flexible and just make sure that memorizing does help for the exam. It doesn't mean it's 100% necessary. Um, and so if you notice, this format is consistent through different types of tests. If I was to take a one, one proportion value, proportion for the confidence interval, I know that my proportion, my mean for it, it's going to be noticed as p hat or aka my sample proportion, or the mean proportion actually. It'll be plus or minus, once again, I'm just gonna put Z star, there's no specific reason, just make sure you know those distinction times. Well, on the equation bank, it actually mentions that it's going to be the P hat, or well, one minus P hat over N, or aka this this value, if you have to, you have to know, 1 minus p hat is usually indicated also as q hat. That's just another terminology or symbol for it. Um, just make sure you know that that's the same thing. Um, but if you go into two proportion, if you look at the equation bank, um, you'll notice that pro two proportion is not really mentioned on the equation bank. And so this is where the formatting really helps because if you remember that the mean was p hat 1 minus p hat 2, that's going to help a little bit. Plus or minus, once again, the, I'm just putting Z star, um, it could be T star, it's going to be actually a larger equation where it's just the P hat, and I'm going to use P1 hat, Q1 hat over N1 plus P2, Q2 over N2. And so the reason why I knew that was partially because I memorized that this was the standard deviation for two proportions. I memorized that this was the mean for the two proportions and then everything else sort of falls into place. And so this breakdown does help you understand that confidence intervals do have a systematic um, way in which they exist. Just so, just so you can remember that that's going to help. And so before I continue doing so, um, there, there is a, also a tool that is very useful. Personally, for me, I actually recommend the TI-84. I'm not, I'm not sponsored by them, but I have found that TI-84s or Texas Instruments in general have been very useful for me on the examination. And so when you are doing this type of, um, you know, the, the testing or whatever or not, be aware that for proportion testing, all of the proportion, the confidence, I mean, so for the confidence interval sort of based, um, Tests can actually be done on the, the calculator right here for TI-84. So what I did was I pushed stats for TI-84 stat, and then I pushed the arrow key once, and then I'm going to go down, and if you look at 7, 8, 7, 8, 9, 10, or 0 as they put it right here, those tests do exist right here. If you notice, you could use the two proportion, one proportion Z test and input values into it. Um, and so that will be very useful for you in the future. So if you want a data set, which is another whole thing, or if you have statistics given to you on the exam, you could actually input the standard deviation, you could input the how many number of, you know, like people were sampled, like say it was 17 per se, um, those sort of values will help. So let's say it was a standard deviation of two, there's 17 out of 35 people that you sample, total people being 35, and then you find out the 95% confidence interval is what you are looking for, you could actually you know, print it out and it will give you the exact sort of values right on the screen. And so be aware that that is an available tool that could help you solve these questions if you do forget to use how to use the chart or it's just a generally a more expedite or faster way to do it. Um, and that concludes my just fundamentals of confidence intervals for today. Um, tomorrow, I will be covering more based on like the intervals and uh, what the distinction is between Z and T tests, along with how to actually do a confidence interval full test. Um, thank you for watching this video. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and like our Facebook page. And I'll see you next time.